Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Tony Hager, Takedown Wrestling Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today, we have a very special guest in the Nike hot seat. The head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowboys now in his 25th year. 100 years of wrestling being celebrated on the campus of Oklahoma State, the home of the Cowboys. John, congratulations on your tenure and moreover, 100 years of wrestling with the Cowboys. Thanks, Scott. You know, it is a exciting time for us. I mean, we think of a hundred years, uh, in America and anything is, is a long time. And, um, you know, I'm just pretty fortunate that, uh, you know, coach Gallagher and the athletic directors over the time really, re really laid a foundation that, uh, allowed us to, to have the success that we've had as a team over these hundred years. And, you know, I think a lot of times we think it's coaches and athletes that, uh, uh, that win and lose, but uh, really, it's it, it is about administrators. It, it is it's about that help behind the scenes that that creates an environment for you to to give you a chance to be really successful. And I think, you know, if I look back on the hundred years, and of course I've been a, a part of that uh, for for over thirty years as a student athlete and as a coach, uh, you know, we've we've just always had that the support that uh, a great program needs and and. The funding, as well as uh, uh, just the moral support. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a, it's privileged to be the be the coach of a program that uh, is successful as Oklahoma State uh, in its hundredth year. John, you mentioned administrators. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up longtime friend of yours, uh, a great mentor, and we'd talk a little bit about Doc. How's he doing? Doc's doing great. You know, he's uh, he's. Uh, He's still going 100 miles an hour, and he's uh, doing a few track meets now at his age. Uh, uh, so uh, he's always looking at, for ideas to stay in good shape. Proving out the ways to be uh, and live the life of cowboy up. I like Doc a lot. All right, let's bring Tony Hager into the conversation. He's got some focus questions about team and the makeup of the team. Tony? Coach, uh, I mean, you guys. Uh, this is a big year for you guys. You really only lost. You only lost one senior, and uh, just a few question marks in uh, the weight. Uh, the weight classes. I kind of want to go through all of those with you here. You know, 125 is pretty much locked up with Clamara, but 133 is a is a different animal for you guys. Garcia, Crutchmer, uh, two uh, freshmen, uh, Brock and Llewellyn have a legitimate shot to take this spot. I mean, do you plan on redshirting those freshmen, or do you give them a shot at that starting spot? Well, I think, you know, we're going to go into the season, and, you know, uh, with the idea that uh, try to put our very best team on the mat and, and give ourselves uh, an opportunity to be uh, be competitive enough to, to maybe challenge for an NCAA championship at the end. So uh, I don't think we cannot put our best guys on the mat and really – see ourselves in that position. So we'll, we'll put the best guys, whether they're red-shirted freshmen uh, or, or, excuse me, not red-shirted freshmen, whether they're true freshmen or not. Um, I think at 133, I think I've got some really good kids there right now. They're very dedicated. They're, they're training well. Um, but they're really not in the picture right now. Um, until they get a chance to show that they are, um, they're not. Um, uh you know, we, we had a, uh, an event last week, and, and um, Crutchmer ended up winning the, the, the tournament that we were in, and, and Garcia took second, and uh, Harding ended up third, who was our starter last year. So it's going to need to play out, but, but I do believe that when these guys get a chance, I think that we could have one of those three emerge. I'd like to keep K. Brock along with Boo Llewellyn, and redshirt Boo Llewellyn broke his ankle, so we won't see Boo this season uh, as a starter, but uh, Kay Brock, uh, he's a winner, you know, he's, he's trained right here in Stillwater over, over most of his career, if not all of his career, and kind of learned how to train uh, properly, and, and it's got a great attitude towards winning, so uh, the weight is as confusing to me as it is you, so uh, <laughs> let's hope that we have somebody to emerge out of this weight, because this is a weight class that we need. It's a good problem to have, to have that uh, depth at Oklahoma State. Um, and, and that's Dean Heil. We got to see him uh, here recently. And can you talk about his weight struggles last year and finding him the right spot in the lineup? Well, it was, uh, it was uh, 
it was a touchy go last year with Dean. I mean, it was a time I thought I was getting ready to lose him from the program and and um, pulled him back in and refocused on uh, on his wrestling. Uh, uh, 33 just seemed to be a little bit of a uh, of a weight class uh, that was uh, just a little bit too much for him. And um, in the end, making the move to 41 um, was uh, ideal for him. I think he had a pretty good season as a freshman. Um, I think he went 32, or no, actually went 27 and 10 last year, um, and then had his best performance at the end of the year. Uh, you know, he's a guy that's going to come to you. He's going to go after you. He's a shooter. He, you know, he scores points. He's all about scoring takedowns. Uh, he's aggressive uh, at doing it, and sometimes he gives up points because he's too aggressive. So just trying to find that balance of his attack, but also having having defense is going to be the key for his development from this point forward. And uh, after he wrestled in the All-Star match, I mean, he, he really identified himself, you know, where his issues were is that, Sometimes when I'm on the attack, I completely shut. I have no defense. So um, I think that's the, the trick for a lot of people and a lot of wrestlers. Um, but with him, I think that's going to be the key for him to really be a guy that can challenge for an NCAA championship. We're talking with John Smith. He's in the Nike hot seat today uh, from his offices in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, you're listening to a very special edition of Takedown, and we appreciate that. Anthony Kalika is uh, making the move from 57 to 49. At least that's what we understand. i got to believe he's pretty excited to be more along the same size as his competitors. Coach, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, this is a guy that, you know, can be one of your favorite guys just because he's done everything you've asked him to do as a, he's, uh, as a true freshman. Um, we needed to implement him into the lineup uh, because of injuries, and and he uh, wrestled for us at 141 as a true freshman. Um, then last season, um, you know, it was a tough cut for him. Uh, it was tough for him all year to make the weight, and we realized that that uh, likely this is not going to be a weight class that he can get to again. Um, with Josh Kendig uh, at 49, who was returning last year as a runner-up. Um, we bumped him all the way to 57, so he was never really a true 57-pounder. You know, he got beaten, you know, the round before placing at the NCAA championship, had a pretty good tournament, just got outsized in the end, um, and, 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 and probably a little bit out-wrestled just from the standpoint of size and strength that he was dealing with. Uh, so as, a, as his third year here, he's moving, moving into a weight class where it's probably perfect for him. And I will say this, he's impressive. He's impressive, and um, he's got some great offensive uh, attacks. Um, he's pretty pretty salty on top and bottom. Uh, he's got a real balance about him, and, and I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, wrestling at 57 last year and, and feeling that power all the time, um, he's going to really feel the difference at 49 and, and how strong he is. Uh, this weekend, I'm understanding you guys are heading to the Oklahoma College Open. You know, some question marks, Coach, that I'm curious to see if get maybe ironed out this weekend. 157, 184, and 197. Do you Are you putting, uh, you know, head-to-head -head matchups into play of who's going to get at these starting spots, or is it who how, who performs at these open tournaments? Well, you know, at 157, I mean, we, we, we have um, – you know, Chance Marsteller and Ryan Belize. And I, I think the, the outcome of, of their, that particular match will probably be starting for us. Um, we, we could take it into next week if, if there's something there I don't like um, from the standpoint of how they're competing or how they won or how they lost. Um, you know, I, I do think they're two good kids, and, and we need one of those guys starting. I'd like to see uh, – um, Somebody like Joseph Smith, uh, I'd like to see them be able to get a red shirt. But again, uh, I'll, I'll go back to what I originally said is, you know, I think when you have an opportunity maybe to compete for a championship, uh, um, you know, the only way you're going to win those championships is put your best team on the mat. And I've learned that, you know, 25 years because I've avoided that at times. And, uh, you know, the year we took second uh, a few years back, uh, I think if I would have pulled a particular guy out of red shirt, we might have won that championship. Um, so I do believe that we 
definitely want to see Belize and Chance Marsteller, you know, continue to do the right things to develop and be be a starter at 157. But like you said, we have several of those weight classes, 74, 84, and 97, Chandler Rogers and Kyle Crutchmer. But, you know, Kyle Crutchmer's a, you know, he's coming off a great season last year, especially at the end. And, and I really, you know, even though he got beat uh, at uh, in Georgia, uh, I see him starting where he kind of left off last year. Um, and and as far as attitude, performance in the room, um, I like where he's at. Uh, 84, um, I think we're Boyd and uh, Nolan Boyd, who, who wrestled for us last year, and, and we pulled a kid named uh, Luke Bean down from 97 to, to kind of strengthen the weight for us. Uh, uh, and, of course, uh, the guy that's uh, that set the pace early right now is uh, Jordan Rogers, who's gone through a couple of years of uh, just some lessons learned, and, and hopefully we need some, some mature guys at this weight. We need to win matches at this weight. You know, both both 84 and 97, we have to win matches. You know, we lost, uh, uh, you know, I think three dual meets last year. And, and in all three dual meets, uh, I don't know if we won a match in those two weights. So, um, 97 with Preston Weigel being a freshman this year and Austin Schaefer getting getting uh, some starting time last year. Hopefully one of them will mature into the weight and help us. We're talking with John Smith. He's in the Nike hot seat today. Coach, the weights for me that don't have a question mark on them are 65 with Daringer and 74 with Kretschmer. I, I, first of all, Alex is a, a joy to watch Russell. He's a tremendous kid, wonderful to talk to as an interview topic uh, and subject. Um, what can you tell us about what those two worked on specifically in the offseason to improve? Well, with Derringer, you know, I think sometimes time off was was better for him, and, and uh, just lifting weights and, and uh, short drills in the summer was uh, really what he focused on. Um, you know, he's uh, you don't take anything for granted. You know, I mean, it's not something automatic that you just go out and, and, your, and your, your skill sets are, are solid and, and they flow and, and your matches flow, and it just looks like that. Uh, you know, you're, you're a dominating wrestler at all times. I mean, that, that takes work. And, you know, I don't think it gets any easier winning championships. I think, uh, as, as we've, uh, as we've seen with, with guys in the past that, that uh, have won a championship, sometimes they, majority of times they come back and not win one, you know? So, uh, for Alex, uh, this is, uh, an opportunity, uh, to win three NCAA championships. And I think that, um, he does understand that, that this will probably be the hardest one because uh, of the expectation that he puts on himself as, as well as the expectation of probably everyone just assuming that he's going to dominate. So he's got to, he's got to respect that and, and treat pra practice, uh, um, you know, like it's uh, like it is competition on a daily basis. And what I've seen up to this point has been pretty good, you know, so um, I'm looking forward to his senior year and, you know, uh, as a coach, you know, uh, watching these guys win two and three NCAA championships, I mean, it, there's a lot of satisfaction for you just because you know there's not many of them and you've got several of them. Austin Marsden is going into his senior season, and I, I think there, there's there got to be a sense of urgency out of him. You know, last year could be, you know, a dis disappointment. You know, what does he need to do to get back on the stand, Coach? I think with Austin, you know, it's just a matter of being a little bit more consistent through the year. You know, I mean, his his peak his peak moment last year was, uh, you know, early January, and just didn't seem to ever recover from uh, having one of his better performances that he's had. Um, so, you know, it's been kind of choppy for him in his career here um, with 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 Z, who was our heavyweight. And, you know, Austin, as a true freshman, had to come out and uh, out of redshirt in, in late in, in early February um, uh, and wrestle for us the rest of the year. Um, came back his sophomore years, he got his sixth year, and so he set out another year. So his first two years, he got he got one month of or about a month and a half of the season. Um, so I think he kind of just didn't get a lot of the experience that 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 you do need and. Um, 
But last year, just just not a lot of consistency with him. Um, and, and I think that you got a chance to get that in your senior year. Like you said, there, there needs to be a little bit of a sense of urgency that, you know, this is my, my final year and, and I'd like to, you know, go out in the sport and, and, and leave with something uh, that I've always wanted to have. So um, it's going to come from within for sure. So with Austin, I mean, you know, you got so many guys that you do need to be competitive, and, and that is definitely a weight class we've got to be competitive. We're talking with John Smith and uh, head coach of the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Recently it was announced that uh, you have a new relationship with Nike, Coach. Um, what can you tell us about that? Well, you know, it just uh, it was an opportunity for our program to, to, to get in line with with uh, um, all the all the uh, sports here at Oklahoma State. Uh, we were we were separate from all of them, and, and uh, now we're all Nike, and it's good to, to be able to get in line with them. Uh, that was a, that was important to me, and and uh, just like the, the the commitment from Eddie Brown and his team on. Um, moving wrestling in a, in a positive direction. I mean, one of the biggest reasons why I think, uh, other than getting in line here with Oklahoma State and its athletic department, one of the big reasons was is they're very creative and, and they're they're not just out to sell you a pair of shoes or sell you some equipment. They're out to make wrestling better. And um, and you know, equipment has always done that for a lot of sports. You know, and um, I think the the it's, when we have a chance to you know, improve our equipment and, and move it forward and be on the cutting edge of, of new ideas for, for the sport. Uh, I see that in Nike, you know, I see that in Eddie Brown's team. Um, and and uh, who wouldn't want to be a part of it, you know? So I'm, I'm pleased that I'm kind of getting in on the ground floor of something they've been working on for two or three years. And um, they're, they're making a lot of difference for a lot of our athletes that have graduated as well you know, um, that are trying to maintain a, a, an idea of trying to be an Olympic champion or an opportunity to be a world champion. Uh, they're involved with a lot of them, and, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I know the struggles sometimes those athletes have of, um, with, with finances, with equipment, and those type of things. So, you know, it's pretty easy for me to, to throw my, you know, throw my hat in, in with Nike and say, um, I, I want to be a part of you. We're talking with John Smith. John, I spent the weekend announcing down in Atlanta and uh, had a chance to catch up with our old friend Nancy Schultz. Recently, ESPN produced a 30-minute documentary, perhaps, that clarified um, the, the Dave Schultz tra tra tragedy a little bit more, maybe a little bit more thoroughly than the movie did. What are your thoughts on The Prince of Pennsylvania? Well, I'll tell you the truth, Scott. I haven't seen it. Um, I've had a lot of people... Tell me about it. Um, of course, I did watch the movie. Um, it was a tragedy. You know, we lost a great guy and a great wrestler. And uh, I will say that, um, you know, um, those things shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, really believe that uh, maybe they could have been avoided if people were focused on uh, the right things, you know. So. Uh, let's learn learn from our, some of our things. You know, all you can do is learn from it and, and make sure that uh, we, we never go back in that direction again. Of course, Nancy has a uh, documentary of her own coming out that will be on Netflix. You'll want to stay tuned to take down as we help promote that and get ready for uh, a, a completely different look at the entire family and their history in the sport. It's going to be an uh, outstanding piece, Nancy is. Uh, Nancy's produced. So uh, let's move on to rules. And Tony, I know you were as interested in the three point takedown as I was. Gosh, I've been pushing a three point takedown for 18 years. Well, I mean, rules are a big topic here in the preseason, coach. And you, you know, what, what were your initial thoughts from the NWCA All Star Classic and specifically the three point takedown? Yeah. Well, I just think that, you know, I mean, I, I've got my own opinion about things and, and it's just one opinion um, to me with the rules that they implemented they're saying we don't want these athletes on the mat as much um, if that's what if that's where they want to go with it and they think that's very important you know I think sometimes 
coaches don't need to be in involved with with changing of rules. I think because we have a tendency to to look at our own team and think what what our team needs. Um, and I know Jeff Swenson um, from Augsburg, who's been a big part of the, the NCAA committee. Uh, you know, he, he's made some pretty pretty bold moves without total consent from coaches, and I really support them to continue to do that. Um, do what you think, you know, because I think a lot of times our opinions are biased, and we try not to be biased. I think we, we all want what's best for the sport, but sometimes it's really difficult to, to, to get past your own individuals on your team. So I'm excited about what they did. Do I like everything? No. But I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go with them. Let's, let's do this on a yearly basis and, and, and continue to, you know, not do maybe what Fila had done in the past mm. <clears throat> where so many of the rule changes were just so drastic and, and goofy um, that it kind of, you know, it kind of depleted our wrestling for, for almost 12 years where you just didn't see a lot of development. Um, and you saw what, what, what's happened in the last couple of years since our return back to the Olympics. Um, I just witnessed the, probably the best world championships I ever watched. Mm -hmm. um, I saw new skill. I saw innovative skill. I saw things that got me really excited about coaching. Um, and, you know, I think anyone that went to that championship <clears throat> and, and watched them, um, uh, watch that championship, you walk away going, you know, I walked away going, I'm sure glad I didn't have to wrestle today in this world, you know. <laughs> so um, that's what it's about. You know, that's what rule change, rule, rule changes should do is is get people excited, you know, that I like what I see. The three-point takedown, I like it, but I, I'd much rather see a three-point takedown being the first takedown of the match and then everything switching back to two. We, we want to avoid those zero zero first periods. Right. So let's make the first take down three points. And I think that we will see a little bit more energy. And, and maybe we wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe we wouldn't. But it just seems like three point takedowns and, uh, against one point escapes. Um, you know, if you don't want us on the mat, then, then that's the way we need to go. And, and, and maybe, they, maybe it's something that, uh, that we do need to go to. I think uh, I think that's a real good, and that that uh, has been brought up by quite a few people that I've talked to. Let's just do it the first takedown, and I think that would also encourage, you know, that would give us some urgency to go out and get that first one. You get that advantage to get that first takedown, so guys will be able to, you know, they'll be ready to rock and roll as soon as the whistle goes because they want to get that advantage. And, and one thing with these rules that I think some maybe might be able to take advantage of is this stall call on the edge of the mat when people are coming up from the bottom position and kind of pushing them away like we normally see now it's going to be called a stall point when they push out from that from that stand-up position do you think coaches will take advantage of that uh that new rule i, I don't think we know how it's going to be called right now i, I thought that was pretty vague and, and really understanding uh, i mean i think the, the problem maybe with it um is there's so many scenarios that, that uh, you know, you're not going to see on the video that they, that they presented to us. Um, but that's okay. You know, I mean, if, if it's something that, that ends up working, we can always change it back. I like the idea and I like the creativity of, of looking at those things. Uh, um, I think that officials are going to have a hard time making the call, but I think we're going to see over the next uh, course of the next six weeks, probably in a lot of these open tournaments and early matches uh, um, during the year, um, we're going to see this evolve into probably a way that everybody starts to understand how it's going to be called. Um, sometimes, you know, what they show us on the rules committee is not the way it, it, it sometimes goes because Hey, they didn't think of this. They didn't think of that. And it's hard to think of everything. No, you know, definitely not being critical towards anyone. Um, so let's see how it evolves and, and see if we really like it and see if it's going to be something that uh, will get the coaches excited about it and fans excited about uh, a rule that's creating more action. 
John Smith has been our guest. John, final question in our uh, interview today, and it's been extensive and I think thorough. Uh, but coming up, you have a opportunity to be a part uh, again of history in this sport as you head your way to Iowa City to face the University of Iowa and the Hawkeyes in an event called Grapple on the Gridiron, an outdoor wrestling event that has sold in excess of 32,000 seats already. They're expecting 35 to 40. What are your thoughts on this event? Well, you know, uh, Coach Brands uh, called me early on, and, you know, our dual meet's always been in January, and uh, normally the second weekend of, the, of January. Um, and briefly said, uh, talked about having a dual meet on the football field in the mid-November. And I, and I basically said, Tom, let's do it. If, it, if it's <laughs> something you think you can create, it's something that you want to do, um, we'll, we'll change our schedule to make it happen. So um, I think, you know, it's an exciting event, you know, and you've heard a lot of coaches um, since we announced this dual meet in, in Kennewick, um, a lot of coaches talk about, you know, I thought of this a long time ago, you know, but the difference between people thinking about it and Tom Brands, Tom Brands did it. He yep. made it happen, and I'm sure his administration was a big part of it. So, you know, a lot of credit has got to go to Tom, you know. Um, trust me, I was one of those guys that thought about it a long time ago, too, never never quite pulled the trigger on it, but Tom Brands pulled the trigger on it. So a lot of credit to Tom and and his and his team to, to make this happen, and, and we're excited to be a part of it. And, of course, great memories of events like this. Uh, I think you got to win, you know. So part of this event is, you know, is preparing your team to try to get a win. It'll be a heated matchup for sure, but 38 degrees is predicted high by Joe Bastardi of the Weather Bell. And uh, at 11 a.m., 30. What was that? 38. 38 degrees, Coach. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in the press box. <laughs> uh, you know, 38. I, I've wrestled in, in in places that that I, I swear. I mean, I, I don't know. You, you get older, and your stories might exaggerate some. But uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I felt a couple of times I was wrestling in 20 degree weather when I was over in uh, the old Soviet Union. Um, place uh, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Sure. Um, I was freezing. You know, I remember having my winter coat on. So uh, it's something we can do. And, um, you know, as long as, uh, uh, you know, we get a good warm up, I, I really don't see any dangers to it whatsoever. Coach, we're looking forward to seeing you uh, on Saturday, the 14th of November at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, and uh, hopefully we'll have an opportunity that morning to have you in the press box, uh, warm you up a little bit up there, but uh, have your words before the 11 o'clock uh, start to uh, this massive event. Appreciate the time today, John. Uh, congratulations to you, our friends at APS and Nike, uh, the neat new relationship that's uh, developed. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing your team as it continues to grow on the season. And 100 years of wrestling for Oklahoma State and the Cowboys, your 25th. Congratulations there as well. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, guys. Sure, appreciate the time. Our guest in the Nike hot seat today has been Oklahoma State head coach John Smith. We appreciate his time, and we surely appreciate you watching. For all of us at Takedown, for Tony Hager and myself, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one, everybody.